Okay, here we go. Good morning, I'm Jennifer and welcome to A Country Life. I have Emily over today and we are working on freezer meals. So cranberry harvest is coming up. Emily's gonna be working harvest. I'm going to have Colton Aisley and then we'll also have Uncle Dan here and we're gonna need some food. And I'm gonna to wanna to have some things prepped in advance because you know it's been a while since I've had two little toddlers in the house, right? Aisley's gonna be a toddler here shortly. So we are putting together freezer meals. Do you want the venison in here too? Yeah, why don't you put some venison in there as much as you can. So all of the recipes that we're making for freezer meals are coming out of um, my, my cookbook, the newest cookbook that just came out, A Country Life, Serving Love One Meal at a Time. This is what we kind of refer to as volume two. The other day we made up a list of all of the things we wanted to do. So we're going to do hamburger pie times five, the Italian noodle casserole times four, Aunt Frida's meatballs times five, chicken veggie fajitas times eight, and chicken noodle casserole times six, slow cooker chicken bacon, bacon ranch times two, cream chicken times four. We're going to try something new and do some freezer French toast. We're also going to do breakfast burritos. We don't really have a recipe for either of those. And then last night what I did is I went through all of the recipes and I just made tick marks as far as how many pounds or cups we were gonna need of everything. And here we go, we are gonna get started. What we have going here is we have a mix of venison and beef, and Emily is working at getting that cooked down. And then she also brought some ground beef over that we're gonna be using for meatballs. And she brought some chicken breast. We're going to use this chicken breast. Um, I can't remember. I think this is going to be the chicken breast for the cream chicken. I also have three more packages. It's not ground beef. It's actually ground venison. Two, four, six pounds, four ounces. This is going to be, well, no, no. This one is going to be for the meatballs. We're gonna mix that in with the beef. And this is going to be more meat that we're gonna cook up for the different casseroles that we're making. So for the chicken, first up, we're going to get the chicken breasts into the Instant Pot. And we will cook these for 16 minutes. What do you think? About 16 minutes? Probably, or whatever the thing says, honestly. So Emily's just kind of trimming off, it looks like some of the whatever. I don't know, what are you trimming off? I don't know. Whatever looks bad. Whatever you don't want to eat. Huh? Yeah. So she's getting that trimmed. I put maybe three-fourths of a cup of water in here with a little bit of chicken bouillon. I think it just gives the chicken good flavor, especially chicken breast. Um, sometimes it can be kind of bland. So we are in the ingredient prep stage right now. Prepping vegetables, mashed potatoes for the hamburger pie. Here is the bacon that we I baked. This is the, I know it does look delicious. Like I literally just wanna like eat the whole eat thing. Eat the bacon right now, rather than put it into our bacon chicken ranch, or what is it? Chicken bacon ranch, yeah. um, like sandwiches. It's a, a crock pot meal. Anyway, um, we're, I'm going to get that chopped up here. Can't remember if I showed you this, but all of the venison and beef mixture is done. We have some potatoes on to boil right now. Emily just made up the marinade for, this is the chicken veggie fajitas. So this is going to be a really easy meal because the marinade is going to go over chicken and vegetables. We're going to put that into a freezer bag 
And then when we want to make it, you just put it in the fridge one day ahead, maybe two days ahead in the fridge, let it thaw, and then just pop it onto a sheet pan, put it in the oven, and cook it up, serve it with some cheese, some sour cream on tortillas. It's just a really easy, uh, it's an easy meal to prep ahead like this. We have our first whole chicken going in the Instant Pot. What just happened? It's full. <laughs> it like almost overflowed. Here's the chicken breast just kind of cooling. That's going to get shredded shortly. All right, we are actually going to assemble our first complete meal here, and that is going to be the chicken veggie fajitas. And so on the bags for Emily, I kind of put more of the directions just so that she didn't have to pull out the cookbook if she's busy. <laughs> <laughs> and for mine, I've made these enough. I know what I need to do. I just wrote page 25, and I know that I can just, you know, turn to that page in my cookbook. Anyway, uh, I'm going to be using these Ziploc bag holders. This is something, actually, a subscriber sent these to me. I wish I had a name. They came from Amazon, and there was no name. There was no anything. It just said it's a gift for you. So thank you so much to whoever sent these. And they're really slick. They come actually folded so they can store pretty flat. Then you just unfold them, extend the arms, and then I'm going to tuck the Ziploc bags underneath here. It just holds it in place and makes it for, um, gets it set up for easy filling. Emily's working on the chicken over there. I brought up some green pepper strips and some red and green pepper strips that are already frozen. We'll just break off a chunk of those and put them into the bag. I'm not thawing them or anything and refreezing, just keeping them frozen like that. And yeah, we times eight. We did this times eight because it only calls for one pound of chicken. I mean, that's probably enough for Emily mm -hmm. and your family, right? Like a pound probably. of chicken? Yeah. But if I'm making this for like seven people, a pound of chicken is not going to be enough. So, um, yeah, we're just going to kind of divide the times eight out into four bags. So we each have two meals of chicken veggie fajitas. Next up, we're using this big tub. <laughs> a little bit of a funny story behind this. Emily said that Sparky wanted to buy this tub for making, he made some homemade brats. And she was like, what do we need that tub for? <laughs> and he's like, well, cause it's gonna help for mixing everything. And she said, she hates to admit it, but she uses this tub more times than she would like to, well, she uses it more times than she'd like to admit. But we are going to mix, since it is a food grade tub, we are going to mix up the five pounds of meatballs. We are using this recipe, Aunt Frida's meatballs. Mm. I don't know Aunt Frida, um, but it is a recipe that I've always liked. So, ground beef or venison, we're using a mix, three pounds of beef and two, like two pounds, four ounces of um, venison. We're using just a store-bought loaf of white bread, which turned out to be exactly 20 slices, which is what we needed. We're gonna add in the milk, some poultry seasoning, that sounds weird, but I think that might be what adds like just good flavor to these meatballs. Baking powder, the minced onion, and then we are not going to do the butter, the water, or the cream of mushroom soup because if you were making just like one batch of these, you'd melt butter in a skillet and you would brown these first in the skillet and then mix two cans of cream of mushroom soup with one can of water, pour that over, and then you would... Um, you'd put the meatballs in a casserole dish, pour the gravy over top, and then bake it for 45 minutes. Since we're making five pounds, what I'm, what we're going to do is bake these all in the oven, just because it's going to be a lot faster. And then, I'm not sure if Emily's going to do this, but I think I'm going to actually 
mix the cream of mushroom soup and the water and pour it right over my meatballs so that it's just ready to go. Mm -hmm. And I can dump that into a crock pot and I can put it onto low or even onto warm, depending on what time of the day I get that turned on. And it can just be going throughout the day. Um, and we can have just a nice meatball over egg noodle supper for supper that night. All right. I do have to kind of tear up the bread here, so I'm going to get to that here shortly and just start mixing everything in. Okay, Emily's just been working at mixing. I couldn't talk her into using her hands. <laughs> So she's just mixing up all the meatball mixture and we are disappointed because I made that bacon before and I already crinkled up the foil but that would have been so delicious to roll the meatballs and then put it right onto the foil that already had some bacon grease on it. That would have been delicious but we already rolled it up, put it in the garbage. But in the future that would be a good thing to remember is that if you happen to make bacon in the oven, oh boy Aisley. She's eating some lunch right now. Not real happy about it. <laughs> and But if you do happen to make bacon and then you're going to do meatballs, just save that bacon grease. It would be delicious. Add delicious, delicious flavor. Five pounds. We're going to roll these into pretty small uh, meatballs. Get those on here. I'm probably going to have to have two or three um, cookie sheets going into the oven. Not yet. We're putting together the Italian noodle casseroles now. Um, so this is about four pounds or so of ground venison and beef mixture. And then it just seemed like to times everything by four seemed like it was going to almost get a little too juicy. So we are deciding to times everything by three. So each one takes two tomato sauces, one stewed tomato and, and one tomato soup. But we just decided we're only going to do that times three instead of times four. And we'll, we'll kind of assess it once we have it all mixed up to see if we actually need that much um, of like the juiciness. And I'm going to get some water boiling because we need to make the egg noodles for this. So one pointer when you're doing um, some sort of noodle, like egg noodles especially for a freezer meal, is to slightly undercook. So the package said five to seven minutes. We only had these in for four minutes. They still have just a little bit of give to them, but that's okay because they'll um, soak up the moisture from the casserole. So that's kind of it. So this is a whole two pounds of egg noodles. I tried these. This is actually the first time I've ever tried the Kroger egg noodles, and these are delicious. They actually have some shape, and they're not all falling apart. Last time I had some Aldi noodles, and I think I bought some from another store too. They were completely falling apart by the time you had them uh, cooked. All right, this is what the Italian noodle casseroles are looking like. So we just kind of used a mixture of cheese. It really calls for Colby cheese, but we used like a, a Colby Jack. And we used some cheddar, and it also calls for Parmesan, which we used. And then we used a little mozzarella. So... It's kind of nice when you're doing things like this, you can just, you know, you just buy a lot of ingredients and then you just kind of use it 
wherever you need to. Like with the hamburger pies, let's say that you don't like green beans, you could use carrots. You could use a different vegetable. We didn't have quite enough of the canned green beans um, that I wanted to use from the pantry, and so Emily found a can of yellow wax beans. So we mixed that into there. You can really just kind of change it up according to whatever you have, whatever your family likes. And then we have one more. So this actually yielded five good sized casseroles. Emily makes hers just a little bit, I would say, on the lighter side here. And then ours are a little heftier. She's feeding four. We'll be feeding seven. So it just kind of works, um, kind of works like that. That's another thing. When you're timesing recipes, then when you start packaging it up, you can say, oh, well, I don't, you know, I don't need that much. I can maybe make two casseroles out of that. Or maybe for my family, I need to double it all the time. And then you just load up your um, foil container with even more. So we started by labeling the bags and we decided to make the, um, the cream of mushroom soup gravy right away for the meatballs. And then we can freeze this flat or even honestly kind of like that mm -hmm. cut the bag off put that whole frozen chunk right into a crock pot in the morning on low and they will be ready for supper so one batch does actually 28 meatballs emily thought 24 meatballs was going to be good for them and so that's what we how we packaged hers up and that's cream of mushroom soup two cans with one can of water and then i'm going to get <laughs> we got a lot going here <laughs> and then i'm going to get all of the remaining meatballs which i think is around 40 meatballs i'm going to put those all into one uh, meal for for us here at the house all right so we are going to cross off the noodle casserole and then we also have a chicken noodle casserole to make the slow cooker chicken bacon ranch I think we are going to, you know what, I think we were supposed to have raw chicken for that. I'm a little confused. I'm going to have to look at things. And we also have the cream chicken. So, all right, I need to look at recipes and just sort of clean some things up here a little bit and kind of regroup and then we'll get back to uh, figuring out what it is we're going to do. For time-wise, it's 2.30. Emily got here a little after 9, but then we probably didn't even start until I would say... 10 it was 10 so we've been at this for four and a half hours we did take a break for lunch um and i would say we're doing pretty well i don't we were just talking about it and we're pretty sure we're not going to get everything on our list done today so either i'll assemble things on a different day or maybe we'll try to meet again to uh, wrap things up i don't really know but right now we need to just keep moving forward so we're moving on to the part of the day where I kind of forget to keep filming because <laughs> we're like, we are just about ready for this to be done. It's 3.15, we're mixing up the chicken noodle casserole. One of us is gonna have to pick up a baby shortly. <laughs> and Emily is working at, working at taking all the chicken off the bone. I'm saving the bones over there because I would like to make um, chicken stock with that probably make some kind of soup or something uh, eventually i'll put it in the fridge and do it a different day oh yes maria wanted to stir this in so this is chicken noodle casserole let me show you and there's the recipe whoops <laughs> i still need to put the cream of chicken soup in there we put the mayo the lemon juice all the chicken the onion the chopped green and red peppers i'm going to add in next the um the cheese and the cream of chicken soup and then we are going to get these not boxed up but what is it uh, packaged, packaged. good word Mommy. we're going to get these packaged up then go wash your hands maria don't shake you. it on the floor so that's kind of where we're at this recipe i normally would use sharp cheddar cheese and uh, monterey jack cheese they didn't have any monterey jack when i was at Aldi yesterday so I have mozzarella and that's gonna work just fine it'll work just fine that's a nice thing if you if you like a lot of cheeses you just do whatever cheese sounds good <laughs> for the day we have the chicken noodle casseroles all finished up if you make great big batches of casseroles and like freezer meals one thing I find is that there are certain ingredients you don't necessarily need to times 
the same number of times that you would the other ingredients. I don't know if that makes sense. So what we did is we did a six times of the chicken noodle casserole, but we did not six times the noodles because it just seemed like it was gonna be way too many noodles. So we just kind of went with our gut as far as what seemed to look right in with like the noodles compared to the chicken. So that's what I would recommend that you do as well, is to just look at it. <laughs> She's mad about something. Uh, I would just recommend you do that same type of thing. Just kind of look at it and go, you know, do I do I need that many noodles? Do I want it to be quite, quite so noodly or do I want it a little bit meatier? We tend to like our things more meaty, um, but if you are really, really trying to cut back on expenses, then by all means, you better pack it full of the noodles because that's a lot cheaper than the, than the meat, although maybe it's not gonna fill you up quite as much for as long. Anyway, there's a lot of thoughts there. But that's what we're working on. Emily is working on getting the chicken noodle casseroles put together. We have more chicken here that she just took off the bone. And then over here, I am working on putting together the cream chicken. So this you just start by making a roux. So you take some fat of your choice. Butter is always a good option, I think. And then you stir in some flour, some salt, and some pepper. And you want to cook that long enough because if you don't cook that flour, it'll actually just sort of taste like glue or paste. Um, so make sure that you actually cook it when you're making a roux. You know, bring it to a boil like that for at least a minute. At this point, I have six cups of water that I'm going to stir in. I'm only gonna put some of it in. It actually should be like a chicken broth and I am going to season that up in just a moment. Yep, just keep stirring. See how it's getting very thick. Okay, you can see that I also, maybe you can see that I just put in some Nora chicken seasoning as well. I'm just gonna get this kind of stirring. I need to stir it well because I don't want it to get all gloppy. If you don't have a camera in your hand, it's probably best to continually stir. Next up, I'm gonna add in the milk and some half and half. <clears throat> some parsley and the chicken oh and the vegetables I need to add in the veggies right now which is some onion and some celery Aisley's got the best seat in the house don't you back to the best back to the best seat <laughs> okay, supervisor. Looking over everyone's shoulder. Yeah. Well, the kitchen looks like there was a lot going on today. <laughs> we are pretty much, we pretty much have things wrapped up. Looking back at our list, we did not get the slow cooker bacon ranch done, chicken bacon ranch, and we did not get the French toast or the breakfast burritos. Those are the only three things. We got the cream chicken done, the chicken noodle casserole. Here is the cream chicken. I just have that. Um, this is my bag. I pretty much made a whole gallon of it because I know that if I serve that with mashed potatoes, we're probably going to go through all of that for um, seven people. And Emily took two smaller Ziploc bags of that home. And now I just have some <laughs> stovetop cleanup and just all kinds of things going on over here. Some dishes getting washed. Emily washed a ton of dishes already. I've been working at drying dishes. Colt is one shoe on and one shoe off. Brother John, brother John, one shoe off and one shoe on. I think that's how the nursery rhyme goes. We have our bacon cooked up. I have to put that in a Ziploc bag. We'll probably actually just eat that with like eggs or something tomorrow for breakfast since we didn't get to do the bacon chicken ranch. All of the juice from cooking down the chickens I have right here it's still really hot so what I'd like to do tonight yet is I have all three carcasses I don't know if you can see them but they're over there <laughs> I have all three carcasses over there I think what I'm gonna do is later tonight here or shortly Emily is actually loading things up into her car to get going right now because it is 10 to 5 I think what I'm gonna do is bring up my Nesco roaster fill that up with water along with that stock that I just showed you from the instant pot along with the three chicken carcasses, a couple bay leaves. I have a frozen bag of scraps. 
um, like onion skins and celery bits, probably just whatever vegetables, probably some carrots or something like that in there. And I'll put all of that in with some parsley, fresh parsley, and a couple bay leaves and salt and pepper and just let that cook overnight. And then tomorrow I can strain that and then I can pressure can some chicken stock. I mean, it's a great way to utilize those bones and everything. I suppose what I also could do, I have carrots and I have celery. I don't know exactly how, how it's all going to go. I don't even know if that's going to be part of the video, but I do know that it is time to finish cleaning things up. And do you have your big bucket out there? Fill in the back of my car. All right, well, look at that. So she's got all of her Ziploc bags in her nice tub, and then she has all of her casseroles here, and she's just going to get those put into the freezer. We had them in the freezer here, and so they are um, all chilled down nicely, but those have to get in the freezer tonight. So when I do a video like this, I often think, you know, I don't do just like one recipe from start to finish in these videos. I just kind of show you how the whole day goes. And it's more to give you some inspiration to uh, just kind of tackle something like this. It's a big job. It doesn't have to be this long. There are a lot of things that can be done if you don't want it to take this long, like all day long from basically nine to five. You can prep things the day before, like do it maybe in three, three days, prep all of the meat, and then maybe the next day prep all the vegetables, and then the next day assemble everything. That's one way that it can be done. Or you can do kind of like what we did and just have a, have a good master list going and just kind of get done what you are able to get done. And that's really what we did. Like I said, we have a few things left, to, uh, a few things left that we want to do. That's going to have to happen on another day. Maybe that'll be a part two to this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.